Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. In today's video, we're going to show you about how to use the map control inside of Power Apps. So stay tuned. One of the new controls inside of Power Apps is this amazing map control which allows you to have complete control, allows your users to have complete control of how they see the data inside of Power Apps. So let's take a look at how we can use this. It's a really quick video today, and I'll go over to the insert box and under media, as I scroll down, you'll see the map control right here. One thing to note here, you notice it has a little uh, premium icon next to it, meaning that this is, this is a, uh, a, a feature that is not part of the Office 365 Power Apps. It requires a license, basically, of Power Apps. So if you already have a license, you are free to use this all day long. So when I select it, I'm gonna show a listing of my schools. And at first, it's a little confusing, like where in the world is going on here? And just to kind of show, illustrate this, I'll go ahead and drop a gallery in, again, of my schools. And let's make this uh, same gallery, just title and, and, uh, and there we go. And I'll pop the address in here as well. Okay, good enough. Oh, I didn't help good enough if I actually finished typing. There we go. All right, so I want to show my addresses over here. Well, first thing I need to do is find out where my default location is going to be for this. As you can see right now, it zoomed way the heck out right now. I have no idea where it's starting. But let's go ahead and put a lat long for where we want it to start at. Now keep on every property in here is can be dynamically arranged as well. Let's get rid of my face here so we can see the full screen. And oh, other full screen, there we go. And uh, let's look at the map control now. So when I select the map control, the first thing you want to do is it says um, uh, default latitude. Let's go ahead and turn on the default latitude feature. Here we go. And you see right now I'll pop in the default latitude of somewhere near the school location and the default latitude somewhere near that location. We can also go through and specify what zoom level we want to set that onto. Looks like it's pretty good right now. Let me be a little, a little too tight here. Let's actually make that maybe uh, uh, 20. Oh, that's way too tight. All right, let's go the other way around. Now, we don't necessarily have to put this default lat long in here. It could recognize the, the uh, addresses that we have and just try to put a push pin somewhere in the middle of all, all those addresses. But by this, we can have complete control over that. And we'll t I'll show you what I mean when I turn this feature off later, um, but we'll, we'll kind of keep it on for the time being while we're developing. The next thing we need to do is point to our data set. So I'm gonna go ahead and first of all, if you hit add fields, you notice it doesn't really help a whole lot. I can remove the other ones and just put my lat long. Now this, this video is part of a series where I did show you how to do lat long in my last video, but let's go ahead and, uh, and I'll put a link to that in the description down below. All right, there's my lat long right here. But notice this doesn't really help me a whole lot. Nothing's happening. I know the addresses should be right around here in Fleming Island, for example. Now on the last video, on screen one, we basically use the address uh, under the input punnet. We use the address input to basically pop in the lat long in here. So we're using that now to actually pop in the address here. So in my case, I want to get that lat long. So let's take our map here and we're going to specify a new fe a few new features, not future, a few new icons over here. First of all, um, we want the items latitude. So when I go to items latitude, we'll say schools table dot. Uh, for latitude, I'll go ahead down. I have actually call them called latitude. There it is. And then I'll look for my items longitude. Okay. Schools again. Dot longitude. Okay. And all of a sudden, you'll start to see some, some action over there. So it has number two now over there. Additionally, may, we, we may also want some labels on it. So I'll go over here and I'll type uh, the, the labels. I'll type in uh, schools. Dot. And I have a column that's called school name. There it is, there's my labels. And you can additionally put in, you can affect the colors of things, you can put the addresses on it if you want to as well. So I'll put schools. I'll put address line one for the time being, and we can keep on going more and more and more. Uh, I would ideally keep on going, actually, you know, put a prop, I'll go ahead and finish it up, that's fine. And percent, and I want the uh, schools. Dot, and I think it's gonna be city. I should do that. Oh, it's not. Oh, I forgot my end percent. Yeah, that's what I forgot. Okay, it's not happy right there, but I know that if I do this, it's going to be happy. Okay, 
So I have my address inside of there. And now that I've done that, we can notice we can hold the Alt key down and kind of zoom in. And as we get to a certain level of zoom, there it goes. It pops out both of these addresses. Now, as we zoom in closer, we can actually click on one of these addresses. And if we had the cards turned on, we'd see a card that comes on over this as well. Let's go back to our properties on the right and let's get rid of my face again so we can kind of see all the properties. We could turn on satellite view if you wanted to. There we go, it looks a little prettier, I think. You can also show the current location, which we'll come back to in a moment. I'm gonna flip this on right now. This is the current location of where the user is at right now. I'll show you how to derive that in a moment also. As I go down though, whoops, there we go. As I go down, let's look at the map again. We can also put a border radius on that. So if you wanna put a curve on it, you can do that. No problem, cut a 60, kind of curve those edges. We can turn on a shape filtering where people can uh, enable a shape drawing on this as well. I'll show you what that looks like as well. Show info cards. This is where we can say, hey, if you hover over this, we'll show you an info card of where the address is. So what that looks like is this. I'll hover over and there we go. And as I hover over, right now we're just getting lat long because that's all we had under fields. If I go back over here again and add a few more fields, like the uh, the address line one, for example, and a school name, there it is. I'll put address line one, the city, I'll put that, what the heck, and then also maybe the postal, that should be good enough for now. You get the idea. So now, as I hover over these, we'll have access to more once we, once we recalibrate that, okay? So, we of course uh, don't need all, oh, I, I never actually hit the add button, did I? All right, so let's go ahead and, and, and add address line one, city, and we'll use that as an example. Hit add, and there we go. Now, as I zoom in, there we go. Now we're seeing the address and all the information that we care about there. That's the point of these fields, is basically that card that you're seeing right there. What, what, what do you want to see when you hover over each of, these, each of these locations? Now, how do I get your location now? So let me kind of zoom out again here, and you'll see one property over here is going to be called the current location, up a little higher, excuse me, current lat and current long, and whether you're even using it here. So let's do the current lat. All right, so for this one, we'll type in location dot latitude. Now by doing this, it's going to use your phone's GPS or your computer GPS in my case, and try to derive my latitude. As you can see, it's getting my latitude right now. I'll do the same thing for longitude as well. Okay. And you can also get things like the, uh, uh, the altitude there. Now that I've done that, as I zoom out, we should be able to see, oh, there I am right there. So you can use that to kind of drive how close am I into this location and build other kind of services around that as well. Now, there's a whole bunch of properties that you'll find in the hidden, in the hidden area right there as well, like you know, turning on clustering and all sorts of cool stuff like that you can do. Clustering is where it, it kind of starts by, by clustering the addresses together. Check if I have to turn this to false now. Turn it to false. It'll separate those two locations and pop it in like that. I really find uh, the clustering makes a lot more sense to have it on, and I mistyped that, but you get the idea. Uh, so I, I like, I like, I'd love to have the, the clustering feature on there. Additionally, you'll notice that I can uh, draw boxes around certain areas and create shapes. So showing like new surface area, for example. So as I hit play, we can kind of see draw shapes on that and, and we can kind of trash those shapes and so on. This is a, a, one of the preview features where you can say, all right, this is our, our service area, for example, and you can give it a name like service area. Oh, I have the pencil icon. And now it will have that written on it. Uh, oh, I, I, did, I did a different shape. Anyways, you can actually build these. It will actually have shape four. You can, you can actually put whatever you want on top of it. And as you click around, it will then turn that shape as round, round as well after you have saved it. I didn't save mine. So it's kind of a neat feature for like defining your service area. And it is this location in your service area right there as well. So this shows you a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of features that this can do. There's more coming, but this is a really, really cool feature, I think. Uh, by the way, you can turn off the, um, the, the maps by just flipping the switch right here. That will turn off those, those maps. Uh, and you can see things like labels and turn those off and show shapes. There we go. Okay, so this map control gives you a lot of flexibility to help uh, to integrate into your power map to show push pins where your customers are at. How you can then build a radius box around that to find out who's in driving distance of your salesperson. 
Hope you enjoyed this video on how to build maps today. Please do subscribe to us and ring the bell so you can find out when we have future videos like these on Power Apps. We try to build about one a week. This is part of our, our Power App series you can find also in our boot camps and our training at pragmaticworks.com. And we also do things like, like a, a hackathons where we build an example with your own data instead of my data. Thanks again for watching this video. Have a great day.